I moved this stump cluster here into the middle. It had been over here on the edge. Little Clyde was a real stinker yesterday. I actually saw this happen. Otherwise, I might not have believed it was possible. Clyde. Little Clyde. Clyde got a running start, jumped up onto those stumps, and immediately leaped again, just touching the top of this fence here before sailing right out to freedom. I wasn't super happy when I moved those stumps and eliminated his escape route. lovely spring garden space is in Portland, Oregon at the Awakenings Wellness Center. I'll put a link in my video description for it. I'm not here to appreciate the flowers or the pretty cool green roof structure here. I'm here to take care of the leg pain and lower back pain that I've been experiencing. I'd like to think that this video might encourage others to take care of themselves as well. I'm not a doctor, so take my advice with a grain of salt, but the pain I was feeling was just getting to the point that I couldn't do everything in my normal daily routine that I wanted to. It got to the point that I would just have to go outside and do a couple of simple things and then come back in and lay down on a heating pad for an hour before going back out to do another couple little things and coming back in for that heat pad again. Completely unsustainable. I definitely had to do something to address this pain issue. I've been getting weekly massages from Toria. She has a studio here at Awakenings. I'm not sure if she has a website, but I'll link to it as well in my video description if she does. The massages have helped enough that I highly encourage people to consider them if you're experiencing what I am. My problem is a pinched sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is the largest one in the body. In my case, it's on the left leg. It travels, the pain travels all the way from my lower back, all the way down the outside of my leg, clear down to the foot. Besides the pain, I've also got kind of a strange numbness in some of my smaller toes. The pain is unrelenting and there is absolutely no position I can find that relieves the pain. The pain and the pinched nerve doesn't seem to be the result of any kind of a injury. It just, I think, I think I just probably overtaxed my body a little bit with all the storm debris cleanup at our property last year. My body seems to be working against itself. The muscles 
are clenching to protect myself, but that clenching itself seems to be what's pinching the nerve. Our animals have to be taken care of, so pain or not, there are some chores I simply have to do every day out here, no matter what. Here's a sample of some of those.
I've been trying to take it a little easy on projects that don't have to get done. Unfortunately, one of those is managing our early spring compost. If you've been watching our channel, you'll know I make a lot of compost. By this time of year, I should have already topped off all of our raised beds with fresh finished homemade compost. This project will get done it's just going to take longer than it should have. As it turns out, Wendy was ready to take a little break from gardening, so I didn't have that added pressure to prep the garden for her plants. Still, a homestead in the Pacific Northwest without a garden feels a little bit like a failure to me. You might ask yourself, just how hard could it be to shovel finished compost into raised beds? On the one hand, you're right, but it is a little more involved than that. I've got a process, a systematic way that I like to do things out here. This bin, and this bin have leaves from last fall. I moved all of the finished compost that was available last fall into this one bin so there'd be room in those two other bins for those leaves. And so this compost would be ready and convenient to use this year. Leaves, along with spent pellet bedding that I muck out of the chicken coop, provide the primary source for carbon that goes into our compost bins. The nitrogen is grass clippings, animal waste, and spoiled hay from our goats. We've got a lot of waste products out here that we can turn into very useful and valuable compost. The finished compost that we use in our raised beds still needs to be sifted through a screen and that is the most time-consuming and back-breaking part of the whole operation. I've got a hardware cloth screen that I just put right over the wheelbarrow.
you just put a few shovelfuls of compost on and smush it through the screen. That pulls out any rocks or pine cones that you don't need in the compost. Also, any larger woody bits that haven't composted yet can be tossed into another bin to continue the process of composting. Plus, you'll always find little bits of garbage that somehow find their way in to pull out and throw away. When this bin is completely empty, then I can turn the fresher top layers of uncomposted material from another bin into that one. I keep moving that material until I get down to finished compost layers. At that point, that stuff gets sifted and used until this bin is empty. Then the next bin gets turned into that next bin or that first one if there's still room until we get down to finished compost. And it just goes on and on down the line. It is a lot of work. I have to use the compost in order to make room for the new compost. If I can't do that, then I either have to stop making compost or build more compost bins so I have more capacity. One thing I'll probably do as a stopgap measure is consolidate all the leaves from this bin over into this bin. That'll give me at least one more bin of flexibility to work with. I asked Toria to participate, but she was a little camera shy. She would have been a lot better at describing the muscle groups that she's working on and the different areas that she's working on, like lumbar or the sacrum, different different things. I'm not, I can't even remember all the different names. She is very experienced and very good. We have a mutual friend that suggested her to me. Hey Christy, thanks again for recommending Toria. I'm not gonna film any of the massage process because it is nude and who wants to see that? The environment for the massage is relaxing. She does all the normal things with meditation music and the warm massage table and uh, you know, it's quiet and plants. There are a couple of techniques that are interesting for relaxation. She sometimes has used warm stones and a steam towel. So that is a good way to just sort of start things off on a real relaxed tone. She does check in with me continually to make sure how I'm feeling. And then she adjusts the pressure she's using accordingly. My understanding is that we want to be kind of right on that edge of uncomfortable pain but still able for me to consciously relax into it. I should be able to comfortably breathe deeply during the process. Toria recommended Epsom salt baths and stretching, so I'm doing that. Cheers. Now you wouldn't think 90 seconds is too long to hold a stretch, but when you really feel it, it feels like a long time. I've got a stopwatch feature on my cell phone, so that's how I keep track of that. Of course, you shouldn't bounce or overstretch. You just hold it, and as Shatoria says, just breathe through the process. These massages have been more like therapy than any kind of relaxation treatment, and that's exactly what I want. I desperately do want to get better. She spends the majority of her time on areas that have been hurting the most, but will work on other areas for balance. And to my mind, it might be preventing acute soreness from developing in other places too. One technique that was a little bit difficult for me to just relax and accept was when she just kind of lift and move my leg around. I kept feeling like I should help her move my leg, but I but just relax and let her do the the movement with her massage techniques. It's kind of a strange thing. It wasn't wasn't super easy for me to get used to that. Sometimes she'll work slowly down the different muscle groups and the pain that I'm feeling 
oddly just continually moves. It's like it's just just past where she's working. And then I think, oh, she's just about there. But no, it's moved again. It's just a little bit further down. Sometimes the pain feels a little more like, like an itching sensation or a tickling. Sometimes a pressure in one area will kind of make another part of my body feel a little twinge of energy or a kind of a muscle twitch. It's, it's hard to predict what working on one little spot of the body will do to other spots of the body. Sometimes, and this is surprisingly effective, she'll just use a continuous deep tissue pressure on one spot and just hold it for the longest time. I'm not sure how that works, but it really does make a difference. It really is meaningful work to make people feel better. Empathy and intuition are traits I'm sure any massage therapist has always had. Although I'm sure those traits are informed by experience too. I joked with her that she could use the tagline, nice to be needed on her business card. <laughs>